Welcome, Damien. We made it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just like, wow, wow. Thank you for uh, being so patient, everyone. I seemed, I think I was doing everything correct with Instagram, but anyway, we're here. We're meant to be here on YouTube. So yes, for some reason, I'm trusting. Yeah. So, wow. Thank you, Laurie, for having me and making this space and being so patient with me. Of course. Uh, feels really good. Really good. We just follow the guidance, right? And they're Absolutely. like, no, we don't want you on Instagram. We want you on, uh, on YouTube. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll go to YouTube then. So for all of the people that are listening to you for the first time, never heard of you before, can you give them just a little rundown of, um, of you? Sure. I'll give you the elevator pitch. When, um, when I went to the States, actually, I was asked to do an elevator pitch and I was like, what is that? So I'll give my elevator pitch. <laughs> um, so I'm Irish um, I'm from Dublin and I grew up in Dublin. And um, when I was, well, I discovered a lot of these things as I start working on myself actually. And I, when I was born, I had a lot of, um, I was out of the body after getting a vaccine. So I had vaccine injury. So I had um, absence seizures when I was a kid and that kept me out of the body and then a series of things with abuse and many different things kept me out of my body so i literally lived up to the age of i think about 27 28 out of the body and i used to be flying around and i was like i had levels of consciousness as well i remember being a child and looking around and i had access to a lot of knowledge and a lot of information and i knew if i looked at the news i would know what's happening on the news what's behind the secrets behind or if i saw religion i would know what's behind so i had a lot of this but i was in a kid's body and it was very frustrating so then i started to have this conflict inside me and i started shutting these parts off as i grew up and to a point that <clears throat> i really shut them off and then I went into the business world and I knew by the age of 30, I just had this thing, by the age of 30, you are going to leave. So you have to work and then suddenly you're just going to leave Ireland. And at the age of 30, I had a series of accidents. So I ended up in a wheelchair, then I had a crushed spine, then I had a breakdown. So many, many heavy things happened to me, which broke, like smashed my uh, ego. Or, or resistance from connecting to spirit. And then I got a message as I was going to work one day that there's somebody I have to meet in the building. And I finally, through a chat line, met this person. And this person had only started doing healing work. And I felt such, such a strong connection with him. I think I scared the shit out of him when we connected. It was like, stay away from me. But I was like, oh, I've been looking for you for weeks. You know, it was like this, you know, it was really intense. I am intense anyway, but this was really intense. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so what happened was we went for a walk by the river and he started telling me saying his dad was a healer and he started to do healing work with somebody, a friend who moved to went to Australia and he had nobody to practice on. So he says, can I practice on you? I had no idea what healing work was. I'd never read anything about this. And I met him the next day and he worked on me. And when he worked on me, it was like a, a fire hose opened up this channel. These blocks, cement blocks were taken off me. It was very dramatic because I was on a, a, a plinth, like a massage table, and I start vibrating off it. And this channel opened up. Now, I mean, incredible channel opened up. And I looked, this starts for, I don't know, seconds, minutes, I don't know. But I was like, what was that? But he was on the ground as well. Same thing happened to him. And none of us knew what either one of us knew what to do with this. We didn't know what to do with it. So I rushed off to my office and I went back to work and I was trying to put it away. My mindset didn't know what to do with this. It was like, just start working again. So I was on the computer that evening in the office and then it started again. And I, after I calmed down, I had texts and messages from him. His name was William and he was French. And I was, I was like, very Irish behavior. I was like, oh, hi, Will, how are you? So he says, don't ever fucking do that to me again. And I was like, uh, sorry, what? And he says, you know what you did to me. Don't ever do that to me again. I says, okay, William, let's meet in the morning because we need to have a discussion here. <laughs> There's something very strange going on. So we met the next day and he was really pissed with me. <laughs> and he met, he basically just grabbed my hand and put his hand up to his forehead. And he says, see, you're a healer. And I was like, sorry, what are you talking about? He says, you're a healer. You just, I had a migraine, now it's gone. 
So he says, I want you to work on me. And he was very strong. So I said, okay, okay, I'll just do it. So we went up to the, his apartment again, same massage table, same room. And when he was lying down, I saw like these uh, libraries open up behind him. And I was like, I know that, if, I know that knowledge. And I was like, so strong in me saying, I know all that, but I have to practice. And then a laser opened up uh, and I start working with laser. And then I was like, then the heart opened up another laser on the heart. And I start directing it around his body and his body responded to where I point this, these, these beams of energy. And I start doing symbols and his body start releasing old trauma, past life, this life, abuse in the childhood. And I knew what was being released and he was having very, he's very sensitive. So he responded really well. So I think that was good for my self-confidence to see actually this is working. This is really working. And I felt this, I don't know, remembrance or something, but it was like, this is my calling. I just had this thing, this is my calling. And I just said, I leave everything. I leave everything. And this is, I'll do this for the rest of my life. I just want to do this. I just want to do this. And I was so excited. And then I asked him, how did you learn how to do this? You know, he says, oh, I had a teacher. So I went to this teacher, I booked a session with him. And he was looking at me and says, what are you doing here? And I was like, eh, I want to learn from you. And he was really like, really careful with me. And uh, I says, I want to go to your workshop. And he was like, no, no, I don't want you to come to our workshop. I was like, but I want to learn from you. And I was really like naive and innocent. And I arranged my, anyway, so I talked into him into letting me come to his workshop. And then he canceled it the night before. And I was very heartbroken and disappointed. He says, my guide says, I'm not allowed to teach you. So from that moment on, that was my life for up to this moment. I wasn't allowed to, it, the way I experienced it was I had to experience it myself and then I would learn from somebody else or somebody would say something and then I would understand what it is. So for me, it's a state of being, experience it in my being and then I understand it or pieces of information would come or someone would come to me and they'd start sharing information. So I never read any books about it. I never did any courses about this and yet it just started. And then I went, oh, watch I did one in the beginning and that was the metamorphosis technique. I did a weekend workshop um, and that just went into my system completely. It was just, I had this ability to download things and it was just in my system. And then it goes to another level. Then I did it another weekend with William and that was vortex healing. Uh, and that also went into my system. And then um, I started to channel essences uh, with Janine Torp uh, in, in Ireland as well. Janine, we started to do that. And I started to channel essences with Janine and then they start flying through my system. And then it started that I, while that was coming true, I got a message through someone who was with Janine and Janine, and it was to go to uh, John of God in Brazil. And I felt like, no, I don't want a connection with him, but I feel there's something in the channel there are guides that can help me. So from that moment, I, I was in the business world and I says, okay, I let it all go. I had this internal message to let whatever business I had go from Ireland, because that would be like something, a safety net that can get me back. I knew I needed to leave Ireland. So I, it took a year to untangle from my businesses. And then when I did that, then I ended up in Budapest and um, that was another very strange story. I'll tell you that another time. Um, but anyway, I ended up had bought a property in Budapest just because the spirit told me to five years prior to that, prior to that, I was three years. And uh, yeah, I lived in Budapest for six years and I started to bring down this uh, technique of about 110 points. I felt Jesus beside me and I could feel that Christ was giving me this technique and it was coming true in stages, different points in the body. And when I start doing this, I I realized that people were getting like people were getting better. Like I mean, seriously, shifts, serious shifts. And then doctors start sending patients to me, and children start off with children's hospitals, leukemia, and that. And that was the hardest for me to see children sick. Um. So, yeah, I had a real, one really strong teacher, Benedict was his name, and he was really young boy and he had leukemia, and I really built up, you know, he was like, oh, he was a beautiful, beautiful spirit, beautiful boy, but he was a spirit, he was being, 
And he taught me how to work with children and he cured a lot of trauma in me about, you know, I was giving my soul to him literally to heal him, you know, because I couldn't, you know, with an adult that's wanting to help a transition, but to see children, it was very, very, very difficult for me. And I remember one time when I could feel he was about to go and I could feel I was giving him things I could, I just, my spirit was like breaking the rules and his spirit says, no, stop, you know? And then I, I realized I did something wrong and I took this energy back and he taught me so much and then i had a fear of being there at his transition as well and his request from the parents which was like my worst nightmare was he says i want damien to be there for my transition mm -hmm. they were sending him home from the hospital to pass and i was like oh my god this is my worst fear you know and benedict was in the car and i got into the car you know he's sitting there and he was all hooked up and everything and and I felt him and he wanted me there with him and the parents went back with the parents and yeah, we were there and it was not what I thought. It was the most beautiful experience. And because I had been working with the parents as well, they had accepted the transition at that point. And I could feel he was a huge being, a huge master teacher who taught me, who mm. taught everybody who made contact. And he wasn't a child, he was a huge being. So I felt like in his lifespan, he did more than anyone I know so his spirit was was huge and yeah he was there and it was like he was making transition on the sofa and it was really surreal what was happening because i was with the parents and we were having lunch and we felt jolly and we felt happy and he was with us and he started to make transition and i left and he made transition after that and he was yeah he was the first one that i was there for transition with and then after that i start working with a lot of children and then I start working with a lot of people who the doctors said, go home and arrange, you know, your final months, weeks. And I start to work with these people and supporting them either, you know, to accept what's going on and then to heal or else to uh, finish up what they need to finish up. So I start helping them with that. And through the technique, there was amazing results. Then I ended up going to Brazil, to John of God, and I spent, uh, I think, about two months there. And I felt, I saw him and I felt like, mm -mm, no, but I could feel there was guides there. So I says, okay, I connect with the guides. And I had this um, vision coming through very strong. So what happened was when I was there, it was, I know, it was normal that miracles were happening around me. There was crazy things happening. And when I was there, I, I was not into religious pictures. And I saw this picture and I was, I, there was someone I knew there, uh, Mia, and I said to her, I says, I love this picture. You know, it was this holy lady. And I was like, oh, I love this picture. I have to have it. I have to have it. And I didn't have money at the time. So what happened was I had asked uh, Spirit, I says, okay, I want to commit my life to this work. This is my calling. And I don't want to do anything else. That's all I want to do. I want to give my life to this. And what... Um, if it's for the higher purpose, I gave spirit permission to do whatever, to clear whatever it needs to be clear to me so I could do this work. And next of all, I went in front of uh, John of God and then he says, okay, into the surgery room. So I went then the next day, not physical. I didn't want physical surgery, but there was a surgery room. And I went in there and I felt Mary, I felt Jesus. I felt all the archangels with me and really angelic. And I felt, I don't know, I felt myself something very, sacred happened when I went outside they said to me okay you need to get a taxi back to to your your hotel which was only around the corner so I was like this is ridiculous so my ego kicked in and I was like trying to block it at that I felt like scalpels all over my body everywhere and I collapsed they took me back to the room um, and then uh, Mia my friend she brought in the picture she, she knocked on the door and the blinds were all shut and everything it was dark completely dark and she brought this picture I, put, I said, put it on front of me and I closed my eyes. So I was in bed. I felt like I had real physical surgery and I start hearing this music like I never heard before. It was Ave Maria. And I start, I don't sing. I start singing Ave Maria, but I'm talking about in the most, it was like colorful sound. It was not, it was just rich. And when I opened my eyes, I leaned up and opened my eyes. There was this golden beam on this uh, picture, the lady in the picture to a heart. And I felt she was talking to me or giving me a transmission. And I, it lasted, I don't know how long, but I could feel this very strong transmission. 
as spirit. There was no words, but I felt something was happening to me and I went back to sleep. And then I sort of forgot about it. Then I was having a uh, breakfast uh, the next day with some friends there. And I told them, I says, oh, do you remember that picture you got me? You know, this lady in the middle of the night, this lady came with a golden. And I told her what happened. She says, oh, that's St. Rita. And I says, okay, so? And she says, oh, that's the one who initiated jo Joao, that she came and initiated his healing gifts. So I could feel it was right. And they, were, they could feel it too. And then Damien being Damien, I says, okay, wow, that's, I was so grateful. But then I went to the waterfall and I said to the spirits, if you want, you can support me with the work as well. So if there's anyone else who wants support, and then they all start doing it, all the guides start coming to me and initiating me. I then purchased a crystal bed and I went back to Budapest. And what happened then was absolutely amazing. And um, as soon as I did my first session in Budapest, everybody had the same results as what they were having there. This went on for weeks, months, but it was very fast. It was 15 minutes, 15 minutes, like psychic surgery, but it was very physical. And then uh, there was a dentist who announced to me on the radio, says, come, you know, he's, he's, you know, you can go to him. So a lot of people were coming to me. And then I started doing groups as well. And what happened was there was, um, oh yes, the, the boy again, Benedict, <laughs> he's the teacher. I just realized that now it's the teacher, it was Benedict. So I had sent Benedict's picture to Joao to see is there anything that you can support him with. So next of all, his mom was there beside me. And then I got a message from somebody. The doctor had asked me, can I take your picture to, to Joao? And I said, no, I don't feel a need to do that. I feel I'm fine. But anyway, she had sent a picture uh, of me and he says, oh, he's working for the other side. So at that, I immediately felt that I was like, I felt like a psychic attack and all like I had so many people I was working with and they were in a healing process of heavy disease. They left, everybody was scared because they heard, oh my God, he's working for the other side. So I lost everybody, friends, everybody just ran away from me. And that was the best experience I've ever had. And um, because I, I felt like, no, I'm connected. I can feel my channel. I can feel, you know, creation, you know, I, I'm connected to the source. But what I did, then I disconnected from all the different spirits I was connected to and said, okay, I go only one place direct to God, nowhere else, only direct. I own my own channel. So I spent my, I just spent the days clearing myself from anything else connected with Brazil. And I cleared myself and connected only to God as creator. And from that point, then I started again and I knew I should wait. And I was like, no, it's everybody's soul experience. And then people have started having dreams and start coming back to me. And then the work changed, dramatically changed. I mean, dramatic changes in, in the work, dramatic changes in my life. And then I started to teach the technique. And over a series of years, many different techniques would come down. So it turned out that every about every six weeks or a month, a new technique would come down and I would start teaching it to people around Germany and around Europe and the States. And I start bringing these different techniques. They would come down, I'd work them for a while, teach them to people, and then I'd sort of forget them. It's almost like they were in my system. So since then, I felt my journey was about, I started my journey completely out of my body. <laughs> and then I ended up being totally embodied as spirit. So and it was interesting, I think I told you this, it was when I was in the States with Mel, she's probably here now, hi Mel. And um, I said to her, I was with her and I says, oh, I'd never go to a fortune teller. I'm not into fortune tellers. And then I went out 15 minutes later, I'm sitting in front of a fortune teller in Soho. And, um, and she said to me, this, this lady said to me, she says, Damien, you have to clean the information from your body. That's your job. Spirits tell me you need to clean your body. And I spent seven years doing that then. And I, sort of brought in tech or techniques came true, which were about cleaning genetic memory fields. The first workshops, the first workshop I ever did, I know I had a thing that I could see uh, DNA strands open up in the room and start uh, aligning the DNA strands. And um, many, many different works. It's like, it just changed continuously. So as on this, like, I, I feel like, I feel like I could have a movie of every single day of my life or every session, you know, because so many things happened in my life and so many um, things were streaming true and so many experiences. And I feel, yeah, 
I feel I'm dying in every moment and rebirthed in every moment. So I really feel like I, I have this thing, I can let things go. So I'm constantly letting the teachings go and starting off. And when you let it go, it opens a space for something brand new to come in. So I don't have attachments to what I've, what techniques people told me before you should patent the technique. I was like, no, it's from God. I let it go. I let it go. So I have this thing of let, letting things go and, um, Sorry, sorry. Uh, so yeah, so that's what I've been doing for the last uh, years. So I think, yeah, sorry, I, I, think, I think uh, one of the most important pieces that you were just talking about in terms of your own journey, and I think for all of us, at least, and especially for me, what I received from you when I when I sat with you for a couple hours was this notion of pulling everything in straight from. From, from source, straight from the, the spirit that you are, the soul that you are, right? Like there's this, this straight channel that comes in because I'm one that's, that's been channeling for a while and I, I pull in the information from those beings. And one of the things that I got from my work with you was connecting to our, our light, our channel, our, to source first, right? Like everything is here. Everything is aligned. Everything is there's nowhere else to look, there's nowhere else to go, but right here. And then you've got these teachers, these guides, these beings, whatever you want to call them that are sort of like books at a library that you can open up and get information from, but it always stemmed like this is just pure consciousness. Um, and I think that that is a huge piece of what your work is all about because that's embodiment, right? Um, is, is being able to come back into that aligned state, all the fragmented aspects, everything coming back in and, and really embodying who we've always been prior to the traumas, try, prior to, yeah. um, and I think right now, I mean, one of the reasons that I think you're so important to humanity is, I mean, there's many reasons, but one of the biggest reasons is the shift that we're going through right now and the power and importance of not only each of our human beings and bodies, but clearing the trauma. Um, because if we don't clear the trauma, even if you don't think you have trauma, I mean, I thought I was completely embodied, right? And then I sat with you and I was like, oh, I'm like 15% on, like, <laughs> I thought I was like, you know, so, the trauma that's being stimulated from the external and how we are projecting it back out because we don't think that there is anything within us, right? Or we don't know how, this is what I was saying on Instagram, I was like a lot of us don't even know how to, to clear the trauma and to, and to through, because what you do is you work on a cellular level, you work with uh, the stem cells you, and it's instantaneous. So we don't need to know how, as long as we're willing to let go of all of it. Um, and accept whatever is. So that gift that you have and that power and that magic, we have to take responsibility for showing up, but the, it's just, I just feel you're such a, a massive piece to all of this right now, especially the next five, four weeks. I know you and I have been talking about the next four weeks, but do you want to talk a little bit more about like what's, what's the, 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 the importance of the next couple of weeks? Okay, okay. So just add a piece in. So it's like it's almost like I'm doing trauma work on a cell level. So that's uh, yeah. So what I it's interesting. I used to channel when I stopped years ago, and since we met the other day, it started again. <laughs> so it's like my, like my a, channeling's gotten quiet, and Damien's like got all kinds of things happening on his side. Uh, to start you know <laughs> so i had a very busy night thank you laurie <laughs> i take responsibility and um, so yes i feel uh i got messages i i have been getting messages continuously over the years and i was getting messages that we are creators we are gods wounded gods on earth and what I was shown was different ways to clear the body of trauma so you can embody as creator into your body again and learn from all of the wisdom of the experiences. Every experience for me is a gift. Every trauma is a gift. So I've learned how to open up the gifts. 
And um, I said to you, a friend of mine used to say to me, she says, well, the universe is like a, like a game. You need to know how the game works. So I, I feel that I've been learning how the universe works and how systems work and how to transform them back into creation again. So what's happening in the next few weeks? I feel <clears throat> very strongly that we are being supported, that there's a major, major shift on this planet at the moment, and the, we're at the end of cycles. So the trauma of the abuse energies are at the end of cycles. That's what I feel. That's what I've been guided to, to bring in. It's like by spirit. I can feel it by spirit. Now, last night, it was extremely strong for me because I could feel councils. I could feel like, I felt like I was at a conference, but a conference of masters and spirits and star guides and everything. They were all there last night. And I was like, come on guys, tell me what's going on. They kept saying, no, you go back down there, you know? And I really, I was like, I could feel it. I was like, oh my God, oh my God. I could feel it so strong. And I felt some urgency in the system and I felt timelines. Now I felt this and I spoke to the friends and they felt the same thing. In the last weeks, I felt this timelines opening up that are changeable. So we're at, there's, there's, there's roads opening up, to, there's different directions opening up at the moment on this planet and they can be changed. And I've, I know through the work I'm doing, I'm doing, I have been taught as spirit how to change the, the how to change the future actually through self-responsibility and also by working with the past, present and future in one. So what I perceive is we can transform the whole field by taking self-responsibility and working it in our system and then radiating it out. What I was getting last night was very strong and um, was that, and it happened in the webinar last night. Last night's webinar was really strong. I could feel it. I could feel the guides and spirits were doing psychic surgery. They were working on every field and the transformation last night was unbelievable. It was really rapid. It was almost like before I mentioned a topic, it's done. It was done, done, done. So I can feel as spirit, yes, there is heavy things happening at the moment, but every time there's something heavy, there's a major shift at the same time. So it always is it's giving you much more. The light is always more. So it always gives you bigger results. And I trust that. So at the moment, I feel there's a timeline coming up to Chris, the new year. And I feel very drawn to doing work. Like, as I said, we were talking about on the 20th, I feel we need to do something on the 20th. And then there probably each day, a little bit each day. I feel this, this will help to embody. So it's about bringing, I could feel, I could see it last night. It's about Everyone out here, you are all creators. Every one of you is creators. Every one of you have signed contracts to be here at this planet at this moment in time. And to also to trans, but the thing is you need to transform, is to transform what's in your system for embodiment. I believe that you are all capable to embody your own creator here. And it's a time to embody I saw a little bit into the future last night because they were showing you what was going on. There says, no, I could see this, the, the guides up there. And then I could see they're going to, they're coming yeah. in. They're here on earth. It's like, Laurie, you, you are one. So the other day when I connected with you, I could say, okay, there's some wounds there, which is keeping your embodiment. So I could see you up here and you were telling me, your spirit up there was telling me, okay, this is in the way you need to bump, 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 bump. And then woof, you were in, you felt it. Okay. Yeah. So that's your spirit now is not up there. It's in totally embodiment. Okay. So that's what I can feel at the moment that we're all, there's a possibility for all of us to embody. So it's creators here on earth. And I could see like around a grid around the earth of all these creators embodying. Okay. And then they re radiate their, their, their energy out to the field, pure love, pure consciousness, that they don't have judgments in the system, unconditional, not agreeing with everything, you know, but unconditional, unconditional, radiating pure high frequency, pure love, but you've worked through all the frequencies. Like I can work with these frequencies myself because I went really into my, my demons, my devil and loved them all and transformed them. So I looked under many, many deep stones, you know, so, I really went deep and I've worked in really 
deep issues around the world and very you know Pacific people who have very strong resonance of these polarities and I worked through the system so I've worked it in my own system so I feel it's it's the right time for everybody to accept who they are and then take self-responsibility as a creator and to transform what's in your system and go into total embodiment and I feel there's a timeline and for this embodiment and I feel it's now yeah. I really feel it's now because I was you know when we met the other day I was like I was, I was speaking to Jason as well and I was saying to Jason oh yeah yeah later 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 and the guys were like no now now and I rang you back and said no Laurie it's now I can feel it's now and you felt the same so um I feel it's now I feel we can transform everything now and we can vac we can transform the vaccines into a state that it's not even existing in the system I believe as creator if we work through the systems, for, for example, even with the vaccines, I was working a few months ago uh, uh, with, with Larry on um, the vaccines and working in my system until they were out of my system, okay? So I believe if we work it out of our system, there's no need for them in the plan, in the system. So I believe that we, we, it's time we take self-responsibility and we stop playing small and we stop hiding and stop being invisible and we show up as creators and acknowledge who we are and work on, our, like work on whatever's in the system. I've been working continuously on myself. I get people to look at my system because I know I can't see what I don't want to see or what I'm, I'm hiding or projecting or whatever. So I'm constantly working through. But what's amazing at the moment, like what happened last night in the, in the webinar, is the shifts are so fast. Yeah. Work that would take a yeah. lifetime to do is it's happening in one, one hour, even yeah. less, even less. And yep. we can deem lifetimes of work, lifetimes. Yep. So it is the time yep. and they are supporting us with this shift. So I would say no panic, no fear. You can do it. It is the right time. And the transformational field is incredible, incredible shifts. I've never seen anything like what happened last night. And I know every time I work, it gets stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. So for me, I never know what I'm going to do or how I'm going to work because I know I changed every time and the field's changed every time. So the field has changed rapidly last night. And I feel, yeah, we're doing another webinar tomorrow, but I feel really that everyone doing your own healing work or supporting groups, we're all the same. We're in the same position. It's time that we really went into it without projecting to the outside, blaming or, or judging anybody else or what's going on in the world. Look at it. Everybody's a mirror of us. Everything's in us. I am the universe. You are the universe. I am you. You are me. So if I work it in my system, transform it into my system, into pure consciousness, into creation again. So for me, it's very important. It's fertility, creation. I'm in this energy all the time, and I'm very blessed to be here at a very pure channel. So I'm working with this creation energy because that's pure life force and pure creation and fertility. So, um, yeah, that's what I'm I mean, I, th I think what it, this, this now moment that we're in, there's no more time to, um, to try to play in the old paradigms of healing. We don't have the time, number one. We literally do not have the time. And well, time doesn't exist, but forget about that. We don't have, it's the now moment. We are needed now more than ever. If you're listening to this video and you're here live or you're here in another now moment, you are needed. And so the storylines that we hold about victimhood, the storylines that we hold about all of our traumas, the storylines of we have to go through this process and this process and this process, we don't have time anymore. And the healing happens instantaneously if you are able to let go of the storylines, the narratives around it. The, the healing that I received from you, I was ready, but it was miraculous. It was in that now moment. It happened. It was done. And off I went, right? And if you understand your role here in, in the human form, that you are here to shift an entire human collective, that you are here to embody your light completely, pulling in all of the fragmented aspects of you that left based on whatever traumas, and you understand the power of that, there's nothing that's going to stop you. The power of knowing that a timeline that says, you know, 
vac mandated vaccines, um, you know, a one world order, all of these things that are being thrown at us, that is a timeline that is not going to happen. How do I know it's not going to happen? Because we are going to stand up and embody our light and be the beings that we came here to be. And if we find ourselves in that timeline, right, we have the ability, knowing who we are, completely embodied, to clean it, to clear it, to heal it, to process it, to move it through, and for not for it not to impact us. So either way, we're going to be fine. But your work right now in the next couple of weeks, I think, is so important because it's time we took responsibility for all of the things that happened in our past, the, all the storylines that we hold, and to show up and to and to and to and to shift because we don't have to go down the timeline of mandated vaccines. You and I both talked about that. It's like, we don't have to, you guys. It's like, let's, let's do it like, just like that, you know? And, and one more thing, just by being in the presence of you and the light and the, the, the work that you do is on such a cellular level that it's not a normal type of work or a normal type of healing that I've experienced and that I think my audience has experienced. It's a very cellular, non-vocal healing that happens with you. And even as you're listening to us right now, there is work being done on a cellular level just by sitting in this, this space right now. It's, yeah, thank you, Lord. It's, um, it's time. And also it's about, well, what's happening with the mandatory vaccines, what's happening in the world at the moment. It's in a way that it was needed in a way to sort of wake us up or give us an opportunity. Just like I, I had like, I ended up in a wheelchair and had these crashes. I feel it's, it's this huge wake up call of humanity. And I would never believe things about my gov about, I wouldn't even say my government, about the government or about the medical system or about vaccines, unless it was literally thrown in my face. So when it was thrown in my face, I said, okay, where's the politician in me? Where's the doctor, you know, this misuse in me? Where's the manipulation in me? Where's it in the past life I can't find in this life? So it's really bringing up a lot. Like even at the moment, the lockdowns, they, you know, they had such a, count, you know, a, a positive effect as well, because I know with myself, it brought up like a lot of feeling of being trapped, of old, like, energies of rape of abuse came up in the system because it's like well that part of me that was frozen at some state the tra traumatized part of me that was frozen where i lost my will or someone took it away from me through abuse was literally coming up due to the lockdown so it's like an abuser so for me the, the what's happening the authorities at the moment are abusing us so that's coming up in my system as okay in the ancestral lines it was abusers so all the abuse energies comes up in the system so it's up to me to transform it and use this opportunity they're all opportunities i don't see any of it as negative i see it all as opportunities and yeah energies it's like all energies have a place so for me it's like everything has order there's a divine order for everything every energy so i every energy has a place and when you go back into that's why i'm working so much with the body i was guided to work with the body is that i noticed in the early days i was getting a lot of results up here but not on the physical level and i realized that the more embodied i am the more physical spiritual on every level i get results and so that's why i've been guided to really go on a cellular level in the body because the universe is in my cells everything's in my cells so when i connect to the magnetic fields of mother earth gravity for example gravity brings everything together so we are physical and non-physical so everything comes together when there's a trauma spirit gets out of the body out of shock and spreads because there's no gravity disconnects from gravity so then you, you spread and then illness comes in parasites come in virus comes in yeah so that's what's happening in the news at the moment for example they're scaring people you know they're shaking their systems this is not like what's happening when you get shocked for example or get fear by something it's opening up old genetic memory fields so it's actually nothing to do with the news but it's it's something back further and you think it's the news that's not moving in your system but actually it's back further so it's for me it's always i set the intention find it find the root find the root find the root and transform 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 
So they're shaking the system so much that a lot of trauma is opening up and then people are out of the body. When you're out of the body, you're about half a meter away from your energetic being. When you're out of your energetic being, it's like the boss is out of the factory, you know, there's going to be chaos in the system and that's where people get sick. So they're shaking people's systems at the moment and that makes people sick because then the parasites come in, they get out of balance. We need parasites, we need viruses, they're all healthy, but it's when the body and spirit's out of balance, that's when the sickness starts. So the work that I'm doing is really about, it's very simple. It's simply going back into gravity, the magnetic field and aligning. There was a point where I was doing, a, a friend of mine was doing biomagnetism and we worked together and I realized how effective the magnets were. So it's gravity because with the magnets, all the parts of my spirit, which was freaking out about being in the body had no choice because they were magnetized. Wow. So I was pulled into the body and then I could work on the trauma. So then I start working with magnets with people because I realized that, okay, well the magnets pull them in. So then I just need to clear the trauma, which was the illusions as well, plus the trauma information. So that's why I'm working also with, you know, with the energetic magnetizing my body. So I, and my, and also to magnetize my bones, my bone marrow, my blood, my organs, when I magnetize, then my soul energetic body comes into, into the body. And then there's order in the system. So everything, the DNA starts going into order again. You're getting something. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm, it's, it's a personal thing, but yeah. So the mat, it hit me real, that magnetism hit me of what I was thinking as you were talking about embodiment is and I can hear people listening right now saying, well, how do I know if I'm embodied? Because I thought prior to working with you, I'm totally in my body. I am like, I teach embodiment. Like I honestly would have said I'm in my body. And I remember when you and I were talking, you were like, yeah, you're about 25%. And I was like, I'm probably a little bit less than that. You're being nice. So the thing about magnetism, two pieces. One, I want to ask you, how do we know that we're, I know now, oh my God, this is what it feels like, right? To be completely embodied. How, how do we know? I don't even know if that's even a question. And the second thing about magnetism, what is, this is my personal share. I went to the desert about a month ago, Southern Utah, and my galactic guide said, we're going to take you up on the ship. But it's, they kept saying, we're going to magnetize you. We're going to magnetize you. And I didn't know what that meant, but they, when I was laying out on the desert at night, I was like, okay, I'm ready. You can take me now. And they're like, you're not ready. And I didn't know what they meant. They're like, you're not in your, you're not completely in the body. And I was like, we, we've got to get you completely in the body. So as you were talking about magnetism and they were saying, magnetize, magnetize, magnetize. I realized the reason they couldn't take me because they were going to physically take my body. That's how they're going to take me up. I wasn't in my body. So they they couldn't, they weren't going to take me until I was completely in my body. And so that's mm. what I was getting with that message. Yeah. And that happens a lot, for example, with past lives. If past lives are active in you, it's for me, it simply means that there's peace before your transition, you were out of the body. Could have been through fear, could have been through guilt, or could have been, I feel guilty, I don't want to leave a loved one, or I'm simply in shock, I can't believe I'm dying, or I died. So spirit out of, <coughs> out of the body, the parts of spirit which is out of the body, it's like a sand, I see spirit like a sand timer, okay? So when we make transition, the sand goes up, the soul fragments go up, okay? But what gets left here is the parts of the spirit which is connected to old trauma or, or basically has been out of the body. So actually, if you want to make full transition, it's get into the body and then make transition. Right. So right. I, I always described it like a theme park state building and there's an elevator in the middle and the middle is the channel that I can go to every floor. Every floor is a different life and between lives. But the parts of me that didn't get into the elevator is still in those lives. So all I need to do is go to that floor and ask that part to come into the elevator or clear the trauma connected to it. 
and then I'm embodied and the gifts come from that life then into the next life, into the now. And the same goes with the future. Right. So, but you can do everything from the now. Once you're in the cells, embodiment, everything comes into order. So it's pretty simple to do actually. Past, present, future, you can change everything. So what I work with then, and you experience it yourself when I said to you, okay, so let's, so I get as much embodiment as possible within that session or in the workshop. And then because we can change the future and the past, past, present, future, then I said, okay, well, what if you were born like that? It was amazing. That was the best part of the session when you took me from one to two to three to four and you moved me through completely embodied in my light. I was like a warrior. I was like, get out of my way. Nothing that happens in this now moment, nothing that my parents did, nothing that happened in childhood. Not, I was like rocking through my neck, rocking through those years without that trauma any longer. It was magic. And you, re, you reset your entire being by having that experience. So that's what I, I so in the timelines of wor the world, it's like these cycles in history. For me, it's in history, okay? We've done all this before, but actually I can, we can change it. That's why it's like, I feel at the moment is the opportunity when we get really conscious and embody a spirit and rewrite history by first working on ourselves, getting into the body embodiment, and then go back to birth and then relive it now. Then we change the future. We change the present and the future and the past. So there's, that's why I feel like it's interesting. I felt this urgency last night and they were like, also chill. It's okay, Damien, chill, chill, chill. So I feel this real peace inside and I feel everything's okay. And um, so I feel okay with it. I feel we just have to run with it, you know, and show up, it's show up, simply show up. And we're being guided all the time. We're being guided. And yeah, that's what I feel at the moment. I feel very strong. Very strong. Yeah, I mean, I just feel like it is the now. Like I'm the same. I, I there's an urgency, but there's also a there's nothing to do. We have to be in the now, but there's such an urgency at the same time because we know that everyone that humanity is ready um, to do this, to 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 do this work, and to you know move into complete embodiment um, as the gods that they came here to be. Right. I. I feel it. So, and I want people to know that they're, I want them to, 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 to trust that, to trust that, that narrative, um, that literally it can happen in an instant, um, Absolutely. right and now. Not to take yourself so serious or not take the world so serious at the same time and yet take it serious. It's, it's a balance, you know, and to enjoy life, enjoy life. For me, it's very important that I enjoy this moment you know, and really stay in the moment and really, really enjoy it. Um, and it's interesting, I'm just like the island beside me was, was Delos where Apollo Artemis was born. And that island was for the gods, they said, but it was for the gods to enjoy life, the good things in life. And that's what I get so strong when I'm here. It's like, Damien, enjoy life, enjoy life, you know, don't take it all so serious. So it's like, it's to get the balance. Everything's about balance. And yeah, like, if this, a, I, what was really beautiful for me years ago when I got this information was like, okay, if there's a fear, there's even a bigger piece of my soul on the other side. So all I have to do is set the intention. Ah, there's a bigger piece of me on the other side. Boom, it's true, the fear. I had a huge trauma. I couldn't talk to one person, never mind a group, never mind teach. I used to freak out of my body. If you mentioned to talk in front of two or three people. I was having, you know, but behind, that was my biggest fear, talking to people. So what's the fear, right? So we ask ourselves, what is, what is our fear? What we have to look at, we have to courageously look, we have to keep our eyes open. We have to courageously devour what it is that we are shining the light on. And um, I see it like a puzzle. It's mm -hmm. like a game. I, I observe it like a game each day in a way that's like, oh, what's, you know, it's like a treasure hunt. Ah, oh, I have a fear of this. Ah, oh, okay. Ah, oh, I'm being judgmental. Ah, oh, okay. There's another one behind that. Ah, oh, I'm being racist. Okay. There's another one behind there. Ah, oh, I'm being greedy. Oh, there's another one behind there. So, ah, oh, I'm jealous. So 
I know behind that wound is a part of my soul. And that's my, my uh, task that day, that in that moment in time, simply to accept, oh, that is me. That's a reflection of me. Okay, where is it in me? And I implode, go in this implosion state, breathe, give it space, and allow spirit to do the rest. I think that's the piece that, well, I'm not even going to say that it, that's what's hard for people because it doesn't need to be. It, this can be very simple and very easy. It's designed to be easy. We're designed to be, we're designed yeah. to be the beings of light that we came here to be. We're designed to allow these fragmented aspects to come in. We're, we're this is, this is, the, this is, this is our now moment to really to, to let go of the old ways, to let go of the old paradigms, to let go of the old systems and to, and to do it and to be it uh, now. Um, and I think for you and I, when we were talking, I mean, there's so much that came through, but one of the things, because I've been feeling this a lot about December 20th, my guide said, you're going to do the event December 20th. And I'm like, well, what about, isn't the 21st the powerful day? And they said, no, 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 dear one. The 20th is the day that's the darkest. And that's when you need to shine your light. And so what you and I were discussing was, you know, people are on different layers of their transformation or their embodiment becoming this. And so it may take somebody one, one day, right? One activation or one connection with us, right? And then, or it may take two days or it may take three days, but what you and I were given is like, oh, we need to show up for the rest of the... <laughs> We need to show up every day from December 20th on um, to activate or to awaken or to allow the embodiment of as many humans as possible. Um, to make and- it a habit, to really go into a habit of being a creator. That's what I, that's what I noticed as well. I, I worked uh, some with cell, you know, PRP treatments, own blood treatment, okay? So the stem cells inside. And I realized, and I'm very experimental, so I also tried those applications on myself. And I realized that when, you know, it was a sacred experience of my own soul as stem cells coming into my system. And what I realized was that what I was getting from stem cells, which is spirit, was that they are, you know, they, they're, it's the divine. It's like an egg. It opens a system, will clear everything in the way, and then give you a result. It's pure creation. It's pure creation. Wherever you put your heart intention into, it gives you results. So I learned then how to uh, work with creation and open. So every system that opens up now always gives a result, a completion. So I don't know what I'm saying. I think I lost the strain, but it's about, yeah, it's really about showing up and, and, making it a routine. Oh, that's what I want to bring in. So make it your habit that like every morning I wake up, I'm like, wow, I, I'm new. And then I go in and have a shower to wash off the old Damien. And then I say, wow, I'm reborn again. It's a fresh new day. I'm new energy, new vibration. It's a new experience here on earth. It's a new, everything's new. My cells are new. My body's new. And I support the cells with this information. And that's what the stem cells taught me so much. They were saying that the cells, when I connect to the body cells, I worked with healing, working with really my body on a cellular level. And the cells were listening to everything. But the thing was first, I need to clear the uh, subconscious belief systems. And um, then I needed to clear um, also, for example, when a doctor told me it was chronic, I need to get that out of my system. Okay, that was really not okay. Uh, yeah, I remember I went for my eyes test and this doctor very... German strong woman said to me, says, well, Damien, she says, you need glasses and they're only going to get worse and you'll need to keep. And I was like, okay, thank you for the information. I took the reading. That's your experience. That's everyone's experience, but it's not my experience. And I'm going to make my eyesight, eyesight better again. Went back, cleared her system out of me and started improving, developing techniques for my eyesight. And then it was fine. I didn't need glasses. So everything is healable but you need to get the words chronic out and the hardest thing for me i remember the first uh, uh specialist i went to on the spine stem cell specialist on the spine and he said to me oh yeah he showed me pictures of guys in wheelchair and then walking one of them was mountain climbing and my system was like he's lying he would does he think he is he's god this is bullshit get out of there and my whole system was like telling me get out of there he's bullshitting you know 
And I was working in my system and I really had to say, listen, I have to stop here before I can work. You know, I need to, I need to work with this. So I worked through my belief systems, then I met him again and then start working with the, doc the doctors doing it. And I realized, no, no, I, I need to get that programming out of my system because it's possible to heal my spine. It's possible to heal my hips. It's possible to heal everything in my body because I'm a creator and I can regenerate every single organ, every single cell in my body because I'm responsible for that. And creation is here for us. And the stem cells are, are, are there to regenerate our skin, they're reproducing skin, organs continuously. So why not? We're ageless. Aging is a belief system which was installed into us. So once you release these systems, and I had many experiences where people were really healed, you know, at the final stage of getting, you know, clearing a heavy illness, and the one part which pulled them in the most was no offense to the doctor, but was the doctor. Yeah, yep. And they couldn't let that part out of the system. And I kept saying, I would never tell them what to do, but I would say, listen to your body, listen to your spirit, listen to yourselves. But this was so installed. And I know it from my own ancestral lines. You know, you couldn't ask the doctor. I remember the first, I had the, the problem with my hips. I don't know, and one of the doctors in Malaysia told me, he says, you must ask the doctor, has the surgeon done this type of uh, surgery before if you need to get it done? So I asked the questions to the doctor and he practically threw me out. It was like, how dare you ask me? How dare you? You know, was this, this was the, the response. I was like, well, it's my body. It's my responsibility and I have the right to ask a question. So this was so installed in the system that I really needed to take this information out of my system and then take responsibility of my own self-healing and my own responsibility of my life. I like, I believe that I should eat right, drink the right water. I should do the right exercise. I also, um, when I released the information of the vaccines, I realized my connection with the sun changed completely. Also, I realized the connection with my digestion. I was eating the right things, but I wasn't digesting it. When I cleared the stem cell or the vaccine information on my uh, digestion, I started digesting the food. It was amazing. It was like, oh my God, I can feel my body's responding and absorbing the minerals. I have a new connection with the minerals. And I have a new connection with the sunlight. I have a new connection with the water. It was like pure creation. Mm -hmm. And I was and I said, this is, this is us. This is who we really are. Remember it, Damien, remember it. And mm -hmm. this is creation. So I, I, like, I feel like, okay, I'm a spirit. We are creators, but when I'm in this body, I'm going to honor it, respect it. It's my temple and I love it. It's beautiful inside, outside, and I honor it. It's a gift of creation and I'm going to enjoy my life. And that's what I kept getting from the guides. Enjoy your life, Damien. Enjoy your life, Damien. Enjoy. So yeah, balance. Everything's balance. Yeah. And it's so true when you, because when I came back into the body completely with that session with you, I feel like light. I feel not like I'm light. I'm yeah. light. And yes. I feel my cells. I can feel my cells a lot. I can feel myself as light working, as light absorbing, as light experiencing um, in a way that I haven't before. It's like this, there's this new relationship with my body, my awareness, my consciousness, that I'm understanding your words so much more potently now. Because if you imagine a word coming in that says, a disease, you know, cancer or whatever that is, right? And it's coming into your system and you're absorbing it as a now moment that's your experience. Your cells are taking it in. Your cells are now, instead of absorbing sunlight, your cells are absorbing the, the cancer consciousness, right? Or whatever that doctor consciousness is, whatever is being given to you, your cells are saying, oh, I guess I'm, I'm going to be eating this right now, right? And, and then it, and then it move, and then it becomes part of your, your, you, your, your, if you see cells as the living organism that you are, and it absorbs whatever it is you're giving it, literally, and words are consciousness, then we have to take responsibility for every single thing that we are feeding it, 
right? Everything that we are saying yes to in terms of it coming in. So for, for me with cancer, it's a gift. So I see everything as a gift. When I get a, a, if there's any disease or anything with the body, it's simply the body telling me, it's, a, it's like messenger. It's telling me, Damien, you need to look at something. Let's spend some time, more time with your body and your cells. Talk to your, listen to them. They'll tell you, they'll tell you there's information there, you know? And um, for, for me, for example, from uh, zero to 16, um, if there's fighting, continuous fighting or a trauma or an abuse, it's sort of like as a vessel, it chips little holes in, okay? And creates separation. And this is up to about 16. Then the system is closed. And then after 16, your partner will start waking up these things and you'll project all that old energy onto your partner. Not unless there's something very heavy after 16. But usually what we're doing in relationships, especially the ones close to us, we're opening up old systems, old wounds. Now, these wounds are explosive. It's separation. That's the ego. It's separation, okay? Disconnection explosive okay so if there's ms or any of these diseases active it simply means there's wounds of separation and so what i do is i work with there's different techniques of work but it's all happening in, in the webinars is that i go into a state where all those parts in the childhood where the separation was and the stories behind on the soul level and also the teachings are being worked with on every level at once until the holes are filled in with spirit and you, the spirit goes in and fills it. And each time the, the vessel is getting stronger. So for me, for example, when I first started doing this work, there was a lot of holes in my vessel. Mm. All right. So my spirit couldn't go in because my vessel would collapse. So what I needed to do was I needed to find the wounds, work through the wounds and this took years, okay, to, to fill in these wounds, allow the soul fragments back in, and then more of my light, my frequency can come in, and then the vessel gets stronger. Now, that used to take years. This could be done in minutes, moments, okay? So that's what I saw last night. I was like, oh my God, I've never seen anything like it. So I could feel people like, people's like fragments coming back in, clearing clearing the trauma clearing it in the genetic memory fields so, like for example i spent years working on in the subconsciousness of the brain uh, so i've been really had this love affair of really tuning in and seeing what's going on in the brain and how to activate the brain and to allow spirit back into the brain and open up the pineal land and open up the whole brain for spirit your spirit and to align it with the heart intelligence and all the way through the body so I spent, you know, I've been working for years with the organs, with the cells, through the fascia tissue, okay? Also to bring in, that's why I'm also in Greece, I'm going to ancient archetypes of leaders of a Tina, strong feminine woman, because they're not in my genetic line because my mama didn't have that to give to me, otherwise she would have given it to me. A good, you know, a woman who will stand up for you, protect her child, love her child. So they're missing, they're sleeping in the system. So what I do as a creator is I find very strong archetype gods or creators and drop that information into the genetic lines because there's energetic lines in it's like DNA. And by dropping those levels of consciousness in the system, there's alignment in it. And it's very, it's amazing actually, when you work with the archetypes, you'll actually, you breathe into your spine and you can feel your spine expanding. You can feel your posture correcting because now suddenly you're getting a father who basically will stand up for you, even kill for you if needed, protect you, loves you unconditionally, a mom who loves you unconditionally, a mom who's always there for you. So all this information, then you get information of leaders, of partner, friend, you know, all these archetypes and bring them in. They awaken in you. So it's the mother in you, the father in you, the leader in you, the beauty in you, the feminine in you, feminine masculine. So we, we have both in our system and masculine and feminine are completely different. They're not comparable. They're completely different. And when they're in balance, they support each other and they, they melt into pure creation, but it's about the feminine masculine in you in me 
So mother is my connection with mother earth. Father, father creator, father son. But parts of our inner child is waiting for, I did them in the webinar last night, the words, mom, please look in authentic love to me when I dare to turn myself away from you. These are the parts of our inner child that's like waiting and waiting and, and you know, I'm waiting for my mom to give me love, but maybe I'm getting it from a partner and my sister would say, you know, get away from me. You know, I'm waiting for my mom. I don't want that gift from you. I want it from my mom and I demand it from my mom and I demand it from my father and I reject it from the whole world. Nobody else is going to give it to me. I'm waiting for my dad because I'm demanding they give it to me, okay? You'll be waiting the rest of your life for that because it will never happen because otherwise they would have given it to you. And if you can accept, they can't give it to you. Then you can go in a state of acceptance and then you can reset your system and you go in total alignment. The words I was working with last night brings you into a state where you're in your being. So everything you do is, is, is allowing your being to, to, uh, to expand. Most people are doing things for approval on a subconscious, it's not conscious, on a subconscious level to get recognition, recognition or acknowledgement from mom or dad. So you will never get soul satisfaction. It will never touch your soul. It doesn't matter if you're doing the best work in the world. It will never satisfy you. You will never have achieved enough. You will never have enough success because your subconscious believes that I have to wait for mom and dad to say, yes, you're a good boy. You're a good girl. You've done a great job. And that, unfortunately, it has a big effect in people. Also, what affects people a lot, I notice, is the genetic. I work a lot with the genetic fields in the system. They're like magnetic fields, okay? So I'm the son of my mother, which should be behind me on the left-hand side energetically. My dad behind me on the right-hand side behind me. Now, if my mom is sick and I take care of her like my child and put her in my child place, I've skipped a generation and now I've become my mother's information. We're energetic beings. So now I've got information belong to my mom and I'm overwhelmed. My brother will get pissed with me. My father will get pissed at me. And I'll say, but I'm taking care of my mom all my life. Nobody else in the family is taking care of my mom. Yeah, you just broke, you blocked the system. It's like a river of energy fields, okay? So my mother needs me to be the son only. I need my mother only to be mom. I need father to be only father. What's between them is between them. I can't be between them either. What's belong to my brother, sister is belong to them. Their relationship with mom and dad is nothing to do with me. If I have children, my children are in front and they have direct connection with father and mother. What I'm about to say is very important. If I have a miscarriage or an abortion, it's very important that we honor them, that you are a mother and you are a father and the souls knew already because souls are always know in advance, okay? So, but it's very traumatic to have an abortion or a miscarriage. So you turn away, but actually they're your beautiful children and they're souls who came to have you know the experience not in the physical form going through physical life but they came to have your connection as your children as spirit so they're in your genetics they're in front of you and they want you to release the, the, the burden and the guilt and the shame and the deadness and you see them as they're living they're living my grandmother was amazing she, you'd ask her how many children she had and she always like named you know, three more children with names and, and you wouldn't know that they were, were not alive, you know, in physical form. And she had a relationship with them. She named them all. She'd talk about them. They like this, they like that. And if you didn't know that they had passed, you know, so she had a very strong connection with her children. So we forget actually that we actually have spiritual children, which are in our genetic place. Now, these children need to be honored as our genetic children. So I need to say, okay, my children are in front of me, I'm the father and they have direct connection with mom. Then there's peace in the system. There's order in the system. If they're not honored in the system, you'll notice you get financial blocks, you'll have relationship blocks, you may have health issues. So it's very important that all your children are honored in front of you and they're directly connected with mom or dad. 
and especially the children we don't even know we had. I realized I have children that I didn't even know. So I just said, okay, open the system up and allow my soul children to be on front. And usually there's more than we know. And to allow them to be on front and allow them to connect with me as father, only if they're mine. And then the, only the, the genetic biological mom. And then there's peace in the system and the celebration system. And there, and there are spirit guides. They're the guides of the family. And they need to be in the genetic line. Otherwise, there's an imbalance in the system. And they need to be connected to their other genetic brothers and sisters as well. And it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's like, and this can cause a lot of disturbance in the system. Also with, um, also with the, the children from the vaccine. So for example, there's, there's also children being used in the vaccines. So it's like, for me, it's very important to honor these children and that they have their own genetic uh, parents. Even though I have them in my system through the vaccine, they actually have their own genetic parents and I want to honor their parents and I want to honor their ancestors. And I give them back their information. I'm just absorbing it, everything you're saying. <laughs> I feel like um, a lot of times when you speak, I'm just receiving those codes or those activations that the clearing is happening for me just by you speaking. It's like, it just clears. I receive, it comes back into alignment. It's done. It's, does that make sense? Yeah. Absolutely. And yeah. then you all the unborn children in the ancestral lines and they all have the correct mom and dad and any, they call them cuckoo children that were born that aren't from the system. They go to the biological genetic places. People can be like mom and dad, but simply allowing them to go into the right places to genetic and on a soul level. And the whole genetic line goes into balance then. It's doing it now for everybody so it's like and we don't even have to know because spirit knows i often i worked with somebody who was adopted and he wanted to know who the parents was and he says but there was a problem with the spine and i says but your spirit knows it's okay your spirit knows and immediately the spine was okay the mind thinks i must know no your spirit knows our spirits know who our parents are it's okay your spirit knows everything yeah yeah. We just breathe through it. It's powerful work that happens on that cellular level when we're just present with it. We're just present. We're not figuring anything out. We're just breathing and present with whatever is shifting on that quantum level. And through the brush, it's and gravity comes in and alignment comes in. Divine order, set the intention for divine order and divine order comes into every timeline, dimension and plane and the ancestral lines. And that's how quickly healing can occur. Instantaneously, miracles happen every day. Yeah, it's amazing. I'm just, uh, I'm just allowing. And there's nothing to do, spirit knows. I think when we show up for ourselves and just show up and that's it, we just are here. We're just here. And there isn't an agenda of, oh, I want to get this out of this, or I want to get this out of this, or I want to make sure I receive this healing, right? Or... I want to make sure that if I, if I go to this webinar, that these are you know, the attachments that we have. I've talked about attachments before and how they create so much suffering for us because the ego doesn't know what the soul knows and the, the, the ego will never really understand. So the soul knows what we need. The soul knows what's next for us in terms of our completion or our healing or embodiment. So if we just show up, in every now moment without any attachment as much as we can, then these shifts, these quantum leaps, these quantum shifts can happen so instantaneously because there isn't an attachment to what is supposed to be coming next, what I need to come next, you know, that 
you're just letting letting it whatever come agenda it's just yeah it happens and for example with yourself laura as well like you're holding such a vast space for everybody you know because you have experienced many things and you transform them and not just in this life but many lives and so you have a lot of history you know that you've worked through and you're not a victim of this you're a creator so you transformed it all so that's uh, very important because you were you're in your being state you're not just reading from a book you've been in that situation okay so you have so much transformational information in your system because you've been that information okay so for me it's very very important for me personally um to be in the being you know with this information so i i for example i know that you have things that I don't have because I haven't been in your shoes, okay? And every one of us here have been in our own shoes and it's all unique. So we're all unique creators and we all have experiences to share. And through coming together in a vessel or, or in a meditation, um, when we go in our being state, the, the, the collective feel of that state will always bring us the divine, like the Fibonacci codes, will always bring the highest results. And if you bring the stem cell information, it will always bring you to the highest results. It's just, it's just, that's creation. It's abundance. So that's why I feel the group feels work really strongly as we're doing right now. I don't know who's online or, you know, but you all are sharing from your being with all of us. And I'm not the same, same person anymore. And you're not the same person anymore because we've all shared these gifts with each other of being. And that's the gifts we have and we're all unique. That's a deep reading with that. <sighs> amazing I, I i i yeah it's 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 an it's amazing to to um to watch this to experience this it's not even a watching to experience these these shifts the um to experience it and uh, and not uh we don't need to be anything other than who we are right now showing up and that's it um and the more it. i know the more I know and realize, the more I realize I don't know. Yep. I think um, massive amounts of surrendering um, yeah. is, is what allows us to continue to make these shifts, if you want to call it. Shifts not even a great word, but, you know, these, this embodiment, this, um, it's the surrendering into, the surrendering and letting go of the attachment to anything um so and accepting that i can accepting the part of me that doesn't want to surrender yep or accepting the part that can't accept to accept yeah yep. so it's really accepting it's there in the system it's enough yeah compassion for ourselves there's, there's no there's no doing it's just whatever is here is here and if i can accept everything that's here then creation will do the rest. There's no mm -hmm. doing. Anything. It's just, ah, oh, okay. I accept my mind is active. I accept I have insecurities here. I accept, you know, everything that's in this space. And then phew, transformation. But I'm, we're not doing it. The well, creation's doing it, you know? It's so <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I love it so much. Well, I want to ask you uh, before we, we, we come to a close of some sort. Um, I want to ask you about your webinar tomorrow night, what it is and what time and where we can get information on it. And then um, a little bit about what we're going to do December 20th, even though we're not quite sure. So I, everything, every time I do a webinar or even give sessions, I, I, 
I like the recorded, okay? And because for me, I like that you, they're, they're like multiple sessions. So you'll watch the recording again and again and again. It's like, you know, the sand timer with a sieve over you, you know? It's like, okay, first you may not accept all of yourself, but as you clear a belief system, then more of you will come in. So every time you watch the webinar, it's going to get stronger and stronger and stronger, and you will embody more. So everything's about embodiment that I'm, I'm working with. So it's working in the background on many different timelines, dimensions, planes, and with many different techniques to clear the subconsciousness, clear all the trauma, to clear the DNA, to clear the, uh, the genetic lines, everything. But it's in st most of it's in stillness and, and silence. Um, so the webinar we did last night was I have to say it was the strongest time <laughs> space I've ever held. Um, thanks to you and your guides or whoever was there, Laurie, I don't know, but it was super strong. Um, so the transformational feed last night was incredible. And um, so those, there, it's a two part I got, I always get internally from spirit what I have to do. So we started last night. So the recordings are there for you. Um, and then we're doing a live one tomorrow. It's on the full moon. It's going to be super strong. It's going to be really strong. The moon here at the moment is incredible. So uh, tomorrow we're going to go deeper, even deeper again. But it's about total embodiment. That's the intention. I never put a, uh, a gauge on anything. You can come for the free webinars. You can come for anything. I set the intention that you can have whatever your spirit can handle or is ready for you can have it i've had people you know children in the room with their mom receiving a session the child does everything that i do or knows everything i know so it's up to you so last night's i would highly recommend there was huge transformational uh, information there last night and um, also i'd recommend the free one that you put out laurie so thank you for that and and um, then tomorrow night's is going to be really going into a deeper level Every time I work, um, I discover new things about myself. It's like what you said, you thought you were embodied. I think I'm embodied. And then the next day I realize, oh my God, there's a lot more there, you know? So I just keep going in deeper and deeper and deeper every day. And um, so, yeah, that was last night. And then tomorrow is, it's, it's a package. It Got doesn't it. matter even if you do tomorrow nights and then repeat the first night another time, it still works. Okay. I'm gonna, um, yeah, sorry, keep going. And then the one on the 20th, I, f I got a feeling, and I think you got it, and you can, you can correct me here if you feel any different, Laurie. What I felt was that you were going to do uh, your part, and then I would do later another part um, in a separate webinar or a separate time. Maybe, I don't know what, we haven't decided yet how we're going to do it, but it feels, I, so for example, Elysium, there's a place called Elysium, Elysium Mysteries here in Greece. I go to all the ancient sites. The Elysium Mysteries at Elysium, Elysium was a place where they would go and they would go at the, uh, the winter solstice and the summer solstice. I, I did the summer solstice already, now the winter solstice, okay? So I've worked there and the guides have helped me there with that. And um, it's a very, very important date. It's a very important time for transforming what shadows in our system, what egos in the system, whatever's there. So I'm going to work with transforming whatever's in the system for embodiment. And each time it works, it's going to get deeper and deeper and deeper. And Laurie, I feel you're, yeah, you bring in your part because I feel you're doing a lot then, but you have that part. That's on the 20th. Yeah. And I, th I think, I think like what I envision would be, I mean, just how I see this is the, I'm going to do some sort of two hour activation and connection and connecting you to your guides, connecting to the beings around you, connecting you to safety and, and sovereignty you know, just feeling safe, just feeling like I'm not alone and I've got these beans around me. And, and my, 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 how I would love to see this is that they, they're, you guys come to this event that I'm doing at the 20th and then you go and go deeper with Damien later in the afternoon or late night or whatever time frame we're looking at. 
because I can't do what Damien can do. Damien can't do what I can do. But I think together, massive transformation can happen instantaneously. And I think that that's the greatest gift that we can give humanity right now is to literally pull humanity into their light, right? That's how I see this. It's like, I really, I know that 2021 is going to be really important and we got to just shake off what's still holding us back. We have to shake it, you know, like, come on, let's, let's do this. And, uh, and we can. So, you know, I just, I think the two of us in tandem yet separate, I just feel there's a power there and, um, you know, and it's a really like, it's the end of the cycles, right? Feel that you see things I don't see and you know we're working in different very different ways but I feel the compliment it's like I'm always asking for like a session someone's going to work with me later on uh, because I like people to see my system because I, I, I will miss things so I want to I feel by the combination that's what I was getting very strong that you will uh, see things that I won't see and then and then we bring in different work in different unique ways for total embodiment and consciousness and I can feel you're bringing in so much consciousness into the system and trying and giving uh, activation of consciousness feels very strong uh, Laurie what you're doing there and I feel it's very very important so um, yeah so I just wanted to put out that I really really recommend uh, Laurie, that you know that people would go to your space if it resonates, and they don't have to continue with me. But if it resonates, if you like to go deeper with me, I feel that the the combination is really strong together yeah. because we work in very different ways, but yet it's so beautiful. Yeah, as a whole. that's that's what I was getting yep. very strongly last night, and then we wanted to go in, maybe meet for a little bit each day to keep this momentum and to make it a habit, a habit of embodiment and to go into the new year embodied yep. and then creator creating a new reality then not going into the old. Because I really feel like we're going to have to stand in front of the screen. I mean, my audience knows how I speak about this, but we are going to have to stand and look at the screen that's telling us that there's a reality that's coming and we have to stand there and we have to create a completely different screen. We have to complete create a completely different reality, even though we are standing and staring at something that looks real. We have to. And the only way that is by being able to stand in our pure God light essence over and over again, a new each day. Um, and we can't pretend anymore. That's what I'm hearing. You guys can't pretend anymore. There's no more pretending, you know, like we're going to short circuit if we, we pretend, meaning, oh, I'm fine. I've got this. Oh, I can do this. Oh, I'm not, there's no trauma in me anymore. Oh, I'm completely embodied, right? Like they're saying there's no more, there's no more pretending. You have to actually uh, surrender into, into all of this. Uh, so anyway, that's what I'm seeing. So yeah, I think each day up until the new year. I don't know, we'll figure out how we're gonna do this. Uh, but uh, we both just know it's as important. As I'm just as much in this process as well daily, you know, it's like, and it's, a, you know, it's just, I'm, I, it's working on me as well at the same time. And it's really working through the system. And yeah, so just staying in a very humble space here, you know, it's working on me and I'm usually teaching what I need the most myself. So it's like, it's really working in the system. Yeah. even really time it's really the time it feels i'm going to put all your information down below your website so that they can go there if they because today is december or december november 28th so if you're watching this you know whenever you're watching this you can either join live to the webinars that he has or you can just go and purchase them as a the replay because they're just as powerful they're alive um so i will put all of damien's information down below and, um, and we'll keep everyone in, um, up to speed in terms of when we've created what we're creating for December. Um, 
on both of our channels and, and, every, and our websites and everywhere else. Um, I just feel like I've got, I got so much, I got like activated just by sitting here with you. So it's always such a gift. I'm like, oh, there's always something else kind of sh moving around, shifting. There just feels like there's always something new. And you can hear a thing a hundred times, but suddenly just like, ah, I got it, you know? So that's also why I like to listen to the recordings again. I listen to them myself as well. It works on me as well. So it's like, ah, okay, that's what it was, you know? But you could hear it over and over and then suddenly just boom, you get it. Yeah. So that's when it's true subconsciousness. Yeah, my girlfriend, Brandy, she listened to your, um, the free webinar that you did on, um, on the trauma from the media or clearing the media, social media, that stuff. And, um, and she got kind of, she was moving in and out of different states of consciousness, awake and then not asleep, but yet not that asleep state, just sort of that really altered state. Um, she came out, she was completely in this different field of consciousness. And then two days later, or maybe it was a day later, she started recognizing that the trauma from her mother it wasn't necessarily trauma, but she started connecting that what you were saying based on social media was connecting her to her childhood with her mom and how her belief systems based on this social media experience is actually trauma from her with her mom. But it took her a day and a half to sort of start to tie it, it together. It works like that. It starts coming up in your system. You say, and you say, Ah, and when you start seeing it, then that's when you know you've got it. You know, it starts separating, separating, separating. And sometimes spirit needs you to say, ah, that's what it is. That's where it is, you know? So what I saw was out there was actually me or my relationship with my mom or my dad or, you know, what I thought or I feel ashamed or guilty. So yeah, yeah it works, but it wor really works. It just keeps working continuously. And that's, that's the beauty of it. And we're here as creators for experience true truer experiences were developing and we're growing and through the frequencies of light which are coming down it opens up new topics every single day but they're gifts for transformation and becoming more whole yeah uh, more amazing more. i'm just looking at the um for your space and time for yeah and my late start so i want to let everyone know because i'm looking at the um the questions if you, he does have a free webinar on his site as well on his YouTube channel. So I'll put his YouTube channel down there. Um, and um, all the information you guys will be down below. So just give us a few minutes. Everyone has everything in it. Enjoy it, enjoy it. And you can watch it over and over again. Yeah. And you'll get, an, you'll get a feel for Damien. You'll get a feel for, you know, if it resonates or not. Um, you know, I listened to it and I was bawling like 30 minutes in and I'm like, why am I crying? What am I, what's happening here? Right. There was just something massive that cleared when I was watching the one on YouTube. Um, so, um, yeah, I think, I think we're good. Yeah. Well, thank you. Lovely. Thank you everyone for your time and space. And yeah, if it resonates with you, see if it resonates with you, as I say, the recordings, the free ones there, the recording from last night is there and then the live one is friday i feel it's going to be super strong i know i Slap. think i'm going to join i think i'm going to oh, join it Mark. <laughs> but tomorrow's like yeah, yeah. i'm in a, i think i'm going to join so the people are asking if the re replays are just as powerful yeah they're living recordings he calls them so they're Absolutely. living they are yeah yeah i listen to them myself i remember i had an accident there a few years ago i was on mykonos and i was like i need someone to work on me and then i got a message say oh go on youtube and listen to one of your own things i was on the beach through it and it worked through my system i say like, oh wow i was you know it just hit me i was like wow they do they really work and the more you listen to them they work i just play them even in the background or if i'm going to sleep at night just play them in the background as well and um, it's good consciously to listen to them but if you're listening to them a few times, you can just play it in the background when you're you're at home or if you're in bed and you will feel it's working in your system. It really works. It's yeah, it's it's not me doing the work, it's works, it's spirit, it's spirit. And um yeah, the transformation field at the moment is just mind-blowing. It's really mind-blowing. I'm really in I'm in awe every time 
uh, a webinar takes place. I'm really, and I get very excited because I say, wow, that was the strongest I've ever, you know, that's ever happened. But it is, it's always the strongest because it's that's the field is growing and growing and growing, yeah. and growing and growing and growing. And everyone's saying like, oh, it's a bit boring. You always say that, but it's like, but it is, it is, you know? <laughs> so that's just the way it is. Yeah, it's just getting more and more potent. It's getting, the veils are getting thinner and thinner and thinner. So our ability to shift, our ability to transform, our ability to step into this multidimensional aspect, our, this quantum field, all of it, it's, it's, it's miraculously happening now instantaneously. Um, and that's, that's what we're here to, that, that's, this is, the, this is what we're here to experience. Um, Oh, it's so exciting. It's like, I know you and I can both see it. We're just like, oh my God, it's just, it's happening. It's right here. It's right now. Um, so again, you guys, all the information will be down below. I'll put his email. I mean, his website, I'll put the YouTube stuff down there. The, re the replays are living recordings. So if you can't make it live, it's okay. You're going to receive it. My recordings are the same way. They're, they're now moments. So you're receiving the now moment, whether it's live or not live, it's you're receiving it in that now. Um, so, and there's so much more to come. So uh, I'm excited. I'm excited. Thank you guys for, um, for being Thanks. here with us. Thank um, you. Lovely. Thank you everyone for, for, yeah, for this space. Thank you for the space and sharing an opportunity. Well, and we're all creators. So yeah, these are all beautiful and you're unique and there's no one else like you. And yeah, enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. I'm just reading yeah. some of the comments right now. They're just thanking you, Damien. Thank you, thank you, thank you, they're saying. Thank you, thank you. All right. Uh, thanks, you guys. Love you so much. And um, I'm going to first... Uh,